Okay, this is um, something I built back in 1998, believe it or not. I managed to find it. Um, the interface still works, which is interesting. And then I also found the other version that I created here, which is crazy. Um, see if I can reload this page. Um, so basically, it was a flash animation, and it, it zoomed into here. And this is a picture of me before my hair turned gray. <laughs> and this would have been an advertisement. And it's a three-dimensional interface that was made uh, by taking two-dimensional um, two-dimensional pieces and running them through an, uh, a, a function <clears throat> that spaced them in three dimensions and gave them physics. So any one of these can be clicked on. I'll just click on S and you can fly through space past all the other options. They all have menus and the menus I changed to expandable ones, which I guess if I were to redo this, I wouldn't do it that way. And then it would load another file inside of it. Um, the next button takes you to the next, to, you know, as T to take you to T. This home button takes you back to home. This loads a JPEG. This loads another animation. So let's say I wanted to go home. There we go. So it takes me back home. And I have other hidden things in here too as well, like um, question mark is actually would have been a search. And that takes you to the back of the help section here behind everything else. The idea was just to create um, an environment that felt like you were in a real world. And it gave you a sense of space. And that was pretty much it. So this version here is two dimensional. You know, um, I can move this around. Um, it has a back button. And what was interesting about this is this is the very first time I designed a database. So the database was written in Flash. And what I didn't find out was until later was that there was no function to clear the data. Uh, at the time, Flash didn't have anything like that in it. So what I had to do to solve the problem is I, I basically created a, I put all of the A through Z stuff on, on the, the data in on the timeline, and then I would have an empty keyframe between each section. Because if I didn't, I would have A, and then it, I'd click on B, and then all of a sudden A and B would be in there, and I'd click on C, and A, B, and C would be in there. And so the way to clear the data was to have it run past an empty keyframe, and the empty keyframe would delete all the data. Um, so that was a solution I came up with. And I worked on this site for doing animations for over a year, year and a half, roughly. It's a great job. I worked from home back, this was like 2000. So anyway, then I came up with this version here. But I'm thinking with AI, with ChatGPT and AI and all of that, it's just a matter of time before this kind of thing is completely obsolete because uh, ChatGPT will have the ability to animate and the ability to create static images that explain stuff. So it won't just be a large language learning model at an LLM. It'll be, it'll be able to provide, I mean, it will be based on it's how it's, how it's created and how it's intelligence is created, but, but on the surface, it will have the ability to create these animations on the fly to explain concepts. So, and we're maybe a year or two away from that. Um, so it's what, two, 2023 now? So 2025, yeah. This, this could be dynamically generated by an AI. The entire interface, the construction of all of the how-tos, um, and it would rebuild itself based on any new information that you, any question you had. So that's kind of like where we're at, but I wanted to share this video uh, with everybody. And there you go.